world champ, like becoming a world champion is, I feel like it's the biggest thing you can achieve in mountain bike. And I feel like I always had the Olympic rings on my on my bed, on my <laughs> wall. And I feel like now the rainbow stripes is the thing I want to achieve. Um, so this swapped a little bit. <laughs> Uh, so this is definitely one of my biggest goals to become world champion. Yeah, so I was javelin thrower, track and field athlete in general. Started pretty young, like with five, six years old. Um, and then trained quite a lot uh, in, in the last years. I wanted to, like, I wanted to take part in the Olympics, that was my goal and my dream. <laughs> and 2.14, I thought, like, give it a proper go now after finishing school and everything. And then is where all the injuries started, so I think I trained too much <laughs> and didn't have the right technique yet. So I hurt my elbow quite a few times, and this was the same in 2.15. 27, is that good? Not 30, 27. One more. After being injured for two seasons, I thought, uh, maybe try something else. But this throw is the reason why I stopped javelin. Because this was so bad, I can actually feel this tendon again. The tendon, because I am stopped throwing javelin years ago. Because exactly of such throws like these, because I wanted it. <laughs> and I was just like, Ugh. So that's it for today. <laughs> I think whenever I grabbed something new up, I wanted to do it properly. So that was the same with mountain biking. I got into the sport, I enjoyed it so much, it was straight away a new passion for me and I wanted to do it on a good level and I, I'm a person, I like to compete against others and like to compare myself, so this is why we went straight into racing. And um, yeah, then obviously you, you can see how you're progressing and you just want to keep keep that rolling and go, go further and further. Yeah, and this is why it just went how it went. <laughs> I think there's something about this this tower, if you walk through it wrong direction or you do something wrong with this one, you're gonna end up failing your exams. I mean, I'm almost finished with my studies, so nothing can go wrong anymore now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the city I'm living right now in Vienna, I moved there because of my studies, actually because of Javelin, to be honest. Like the city is not too big, I don't like big cities. <laughs> and it's um, a nice vibe in town, there's a lot of students and young people there and then you have the mountains all around where you can go biking. Yeah, so actually I just finished my studies now, <laughs> so I'm a master of science and psychology now. Racing took, took over my life quite a lot in the last year, so this is why it took a little bit longer. It also helps me in, in my sport, that made me go more into sports psychology and all that stuff. Pre-season training can be pretty different. Actually, this winter we've been quite a lot away from home, being in New Zealand and Australia training there. But then whenever I'm getting back home, I really like to get to a structured plan, getting my endurance done, my intervals, also a lot of gym, especially in the winter. Try to go three times a week to the gym and lift some weights. <laughs> better get my numbers my watts on the on the trainer seeing like oh I got these now and or lifting weights get these numbers on the bench press or the, the squats or whatever it just makes me happy and feeling strong oh got my got my steps goal for today <laughs> Look, I was having setback after setback to the prison for my dead trap it's a head trap going up no farther man it's a man trap Look. So we are at Duffy Bike Park today, just doing some laps actually. Um, Laurie and Steve are with me, because at home it's not too great the riding, it's just coming over here. And uh, yeah, weather's great at the moment, so let's go. I'm winning when I'm walking because I'm lapping you ten times on God time, back in the system. We hard line back to the wisdom, no hard time, shot make us victims. You all finna pass, you forgive it. Mind is a place you can live in and thrive in. Steve is 
kind of a mentor for me. Um, he's got so much knowledge and experience from the last years and I really look up to him and just the way he is. He's so like open and just kind and listens to you. Whenever there's something going wrong, I know I can go to Steve and just tell him like, just listen to me. <laughs> you don't have to say anything, just listen and then he listens. <laughs> Shit. You no, okay? Good, good. Sure? I should be alright. Yeah, I should be You look like you hit your shoulder hard. Nah, but... nah, I landed on my hips. Okay. And the thumb. Yeah, so we've been two days at Davi. I'm mainly riding. Oh, the whole weekend was mainly for riding. That was pretty good. Except of my little crash today, because my thumb pretty, yeah. Hurts. <laughs> Didn't do that many runs in the afternoon, but um, yeah, yesterday was pretty good. I'm um, riding with Laurie as well and Steve. Always oh, great to come come to the UK and ride. That is pretty good. So this off season we got a completely new V10 prototype bike, which had to be tested. That was not quite a lot of work, but obviously if you get a new bike, you need to get used to it, and it takes a bit more time than usual. But it was also good to have this time. Like I've never spent so much time in the winter on the downhill bike. We tested so many different things, my mechanic and me. That helped me a lot to get confident on the bike. I said to Ethan, my mechanic, I've never been so settled and confident on a bike before. So it just feels home. <laughs> Lusa Track's pretty good to test stuff because it got everything in it, every different kind of stuff you need and it's not too dangerous. So I um, really enjoyed the time there. Actually it was quite, that weekend was quite, quite hard for me because we went a bit back and forth with the suspension and couldn't find a good setup and then I felt pretty weak the second day. Finally the third day we found a good setup in the, in the, in the end and I was quite happy about that but uh, it was hard work. <laughs> The BDS and Fort William went pretty well. I don't think it's going to be the same track for World Champs, but obviously it's still Fort William and a similar track. And I just, yeah, enjoyed riding there. It ended up first in the race, even if I crashed. So I went down in one of the first turns. Did like a classical. Classic Nina move, <laughs> being a bit too excited, coming too hot into the turn and just washed the front. But as quick as I fell down, I was up on the bike again and just carried on and thought like, ah, okay, the track's so long, you can still get good splits or something like that. I mean, the wind is gone now, but okay. Then I came down and was first with two seconds. Couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah, obviously it gives me a, a bit of confidence for world champs. Um, and shows that I think track suits me, getting along with it quite well. So, yeah. Well, it was a good confidence boost that, that raced. Coming to Lenzerheide, I felt pretty prepared. We did so many testing before. We, I spoke with Ethan and we both agreed on, like there's nothing left open to test. So we are on a perfect or optimal setup right now. And we just felt confident coming into the race. To be honest, I was still, it's, I think this is this type of first race of the season. You're a bit more nervous than usual because you've done your work, you tested a lot, you trained a lot, but you still don't know what the other girls did. <laughs> so you don't know where you're 100% at. Even if I had a few pre-season races, but the World Cup is a World Cup and it's a different story. So that made me a little bit nervous. Definitely not wrong. It looks good, pretty fresh and natural stuff. Um, I mean, the last section is the same as last year, but on top they did a few new turns, which is going to be interesting. And yeah, I liked it quite last year, so I'm excited. Like after track walk, <laughs> not that I had problems to sleep, but 
<laughs> I was quite excited going to bed and getting on the bike the next day. And then that first day of practice was the best day I had in eight, not in ages, but it was one of the best World Cup practices I had so far. I just did all my lines I wanted to do. I did a gap I wanted to do and all that stuff. Like all the, the runs were planned pretty well. The, the track stayed dry, which helped a lot. Um, yeah. I'm pretty stoked to have these teammates I have around me. Everyone is, is different and everyone has their, their positives. I can learn a lot from them, like especially Greg. I mean, he's the GOAT. He got a lot of experience, especially when it comes to suspension or to different tracks or to lines on the tracks. I'm always impressed how precise he's looking on lines. I'm crazy how dedicated he works. And then you've got... I mean, Jackson is the complete opposite. He's just enjoying life and living and riding bikes. And this is like, this positive attitude is so great. And this drives me as well. Like when he comes to the pits and just puts a good song on and like dancing around, I'm, I'm getting in the same mood. And then Loza is kind of the same. He's also just a good lad, always positive and everything. But Loza is also a bit more experienced already and he's always got a few good hints for me or advices, which actually helps a lot. So um, yeah, I really appreciate that. There's the wall on the inside, one of the last technical sections. Went through that one quite well and just couldn't make the turn afterwards because I came with quite a lot of speed, which I wasn't expecting. And when I was falling, I was like, oh, another funny, stupid crash. <laughs> I just rolled over my back, stood up and felt like, I think your knee is not right. Like it didn't, it wasn't pain, but it just felt wrong. Like as, as someone would have pinched me in the back of my knee, it just felt like swollen and thick there. So our physio did a lot of tests and treatments and that stuff and in the end I decided not to race qualifying because we didn't know what's going on there. Come on, Nina. I just felt pretty, pretty unconfident with that knee and I never had knee injury before so I didn't know what it is and I didn't want to make it worse. Race day morning was just, it was, got, it was a back and forth for me, if racing or not. And I came, like I woke up, the first thing I was, was crying, what I did. Um, because I could feel like I, I was going, wanted to go out of the bed and the knee was just stiff and thick and everything. And then, um, and then I got my leg taped from the physio. And that was the first step where it felt a bit better and more stable, just with the tape on. Then I came to the pits and then Ethan said, oh, you have got a knee brace for you. And I put this knee brace on. I was like, oh, I think I can give it a try now. Then I went up. So after, after doing this first lap, coming down to the pits, and actually kind of started crying again because I felt like, I think I can race. And that made me so happy. And then Ethan was happy and everyone else. I said to Ethan, I can race, I don't feel like I'm competitive. I feel like I can do a like seventh or eighth, something like that, a top 10 result. Let's do this to get some points for the overall and everything. I just take it super easy. Let's go racing, Clem. In the stillness of the hour Let your mind be free to think of the future and the dreams you hope will be. I just gave it a go and for semi-finals I felt like I just ride super smooth and safe now. And then let's see, sometimes smooth and safe is fast. And then I got third in semi-finals. So like, okay, I mean, it didn't feel fast for me. 
I wanna stand by your side. Yeah, so I was pretty stoked. I thought actually then for finals it might get, like maybe all the girls were a bit hesitating and not going that fast, but also I didn't. I'll taste the bitter with the sweet. I was happy that, I, that I'm in this position at the moment and don't have to watch the race. No matter what we go through, I want to walk Nina through Hoffman this gets life. ready to leave the start hunt now. The Santa Cruz Syndicate rider in oh, right out to the outside of that really choppy off canvas. She entered that wood section. Oh, well, she's still off to the same, but she dropped the line. Is it going to be enough for this large valley hole for the hot seat? Baby, oh, baby. Oh, baby. Nina Hoffman goes fastest in Lenz or Heide. And, uh, yeah. Gave it a little bit more juice <laughs> and ended up third in the end again. That felt pretty, pretty good. And what was even greater was that I was only 0.7 off the win. That made me feel happy. That showed me that the pace is there. Took a lot of pressure. That made me also just excited for the next races. The women's field is quite stacked these days. Um, it's a lot of strong riders. Um, biggest competitors are definitely Camille Balanche and Valley Hill. Actually, Miriam Nicole as well. She's unfortunately out of, because of a concussion at the moment. And then we just saw Rachel coming back the first race, taking a win. So that makes it even more intense. And then after these girls, there are even more girls coming. It makes racing quite intense. You're not allowed to do to do major mistakes. <laughs> um, I'm just looking forward to World Champs at the moment. I don't know why, but I'm just uh, keen to race there and to go back to Fort William. I definitely take away from the first two rounds that I'm on pace, on a pace where I can definitely ride top three, and if I get a good run and a good day, I can win a race. I know the pace is there, and as soon as my knee is 100% again, then I'm 100%. And then can go good. I really enjoy what I'm doing now. I'm really grateful for that. So I don't, I don't feel like you could wish me anything. <laughs> I mean, maybe wish me a little bit of luck for Fort William. 